Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Uh, welcome to episode four of our Top 5 Fridays news articles. I'm um, really excited about this week because we've only got kind of one COVID-19 topic and the rest are, are, are different, um, which is exciting because this is, you know, the fourth, fourth one of these videos that we've done and the first three have been, uh, have been pretty filled with COVID-19 news, um, not surprisingly because that's a, a big deal right now. Um, but anyways, let's get right into it. And the first one is a COVID-19 topic. Um, and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's continuing the story that we've been talking about for really a few weeks now, or almost a month. Um, and that is basically whether ski areas are going to be able to reopen or not. Um, you know, we're seeing a bunch of different stuff around the world right now. There's, there's some resorts opening in some places of the world, some that aren't. Last week we talked about um, Aspen wanting to reopen, or maybe that was two weeks ago actually that we talked about Aspen wanting to reopen. And then we talked about Wolf Creek last week. Um, the Colorado governor has extended ski area closures until May 23rd. Um, so for most of these resorts, that's basically closing the window. You know, that's three weeks from now, essentially, and that's three weeks of pretty warm weather. Um, so pretty unlikely that they're going to be reopened. Um, there's a bunch of different stories on this. Um, we, the ones that we're, we're looking at today, Aspen Times, Denver Post, and then also Oregon Live, which I'll get to. Um, but one of them in particular looks pretty closely at Wolf Creek, which I thought was really interesting um, because they did get approval to open from May 1st to May 10th. But the problem was, even with this, they got approval to do that, um, but they weren't able to get that 10 mile radius restriction lifted and there just weren't enough people close enough to go skiing. Um, so pretty interesting. I definitely encourage you to read more about that if you're interested. Um, and then Oregon Live, you know, we're jumping outside of Colorado for this one, um, but Oregon resorts have been given the green light to reopen. Um, so we expect that Mount Hood will reopen. Um, I even, I have quite a few friends out there, like Jeff Curry, who helped develop the, the line Blade um, I saw some posts from him recently that he's pretty excited to get back on snow. Um, so it'll be interesting to follow that and follow the developments with that. I was out uh, in Mount Hood last year with, uh, with K2 and um, had a blast. So I'm kind of thinking in the back of my mind, maybe I can get out to Mount Hood this summer again and, you know, maybe do some ski testing or, or some filming out there or, or what have you. Um, but COVID-19 developments, ski area closures, opening all interesting stuff definitely take a look if, if you want to read more about it um, and that's pretty much it for COVID-19 so from then on uh, the, the topics are a little bit lighter uh, with one exception I suppose um, but it's it's still not like COVID-19 level uh, negativity so to speak um, but next up we have U.S. ski team uh, U.S. ski team you know announcements or, or invitations have been have been sent out um, so this is really fun. I actually, I, I get kind of nerdy about stuff like this, but it's really fun to see who's named to the U.S. ski team. Um, they do it pretty much around the same time of year every year, you know, and they have like their, their premier team and then rookie teams. And it, it's really interesting watching people, you know, the young guns get named to that rookie team and, and watching them, watching them kind of climb the ranks and, and watching their careers progress. Um, it's been, been really fun for me. You know, I have, I have a somewhat of a competitive ski background myself in slope style, freestyle Avenue. Um, so that's kind of what I focus on myself. Um, but we've got links to basically everything. So whether you're interested in the Alpine team or the freestyle team or the free ski team, um, you know, check it out and you can see all the links. Something that I thought was really interesting is there's a huge range in ages on, on the U S ski team. You know, and, and you have to kind of go, actually, I guess, I bet if you stuck within racing, it's the same range. Um, but, you know, you've got like 18 and 19 year olds, and then you've got Steve Nyman and, and Ted Ligety. Um, Steve's 38 and Ted's 36. So you've literally got like 20 years of range on the U.S. ski team um, with, with Ted and Steve being kind of the, the elder statesmen these days, so to speak. Um, so congratulations. Uh, I, I would just like to leave a note on the slope style team. I think it's really cool. Um, K2 
Kieran and Fagan and Devin Fagan, their brothers, I think they're twins. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong about that. But they both got named to the kind of premier slope style team along with Cody LaPlante. So they join Alex Hall, Col Colby Stevenson, and Nick Gepper. Um, and to me, that's a pretty stacked slope style team. So it's going to be really interesting. Hopefully, you know, hopefully World Cup competition is, is back to some resemblance of normal next year. And I personally am very interested to see how that slope style team stacks up against everybody else. Um, next, we have this is kind of continuing the, the competition theme, so to speak. There's a little bit of COVID-19 in here, too. But Bleacher Report has a really good story on basically Michaela Schifrin's season. Um, and, and it was a challenging season for Michaela. If you follow ski racing at all, or if you are a fan of Michaela Schifrin, or even if you're not, you probably heard about stuff like this because Michaela's pretty much international news. You know, she'll make the front cover of newspapers around the world, whether they're in a ski town or not. Um, Michaela had a rough season, you know, and in many, in, in many senses or, or in many ways, this season should have kind of been a victory lap for Michaela, so to speak. Um, and instead, she, she had a lot of kind of troubling things happen in her life. Her Nana passed away. Her dad had an unfortunate accident and also passed away. Um, and then, you know, just as she was kind of recovering emotionally from those two events, the competition season ended. Um, so really interesting story. It's pretty long, but I would really encourage people to read it because I, it's a good read. Um, and, and Michaela's story is really cool. And, and I just, I think she's a, a great person in general. You know, she, she does some really cool stuff outside of ski racing. Um, seems to be a very respectful, down-to-earth person, even considering her, her massive success. Um, so check that out. And it talks a lot about her relationship with her mom, which is, which is kind of one of the, one of the key, key elements to her, her success. And, and I think her, uh, not only as a ski racer, but her success just as a human. Um, so check that out. We're big Michaela Schifrin fans at, at Ski Essentials. Um, and then last one, this is one that I kind of found, or, or I found half of it. And Matt, Matt McGinnis, who writes Top 5 Fridays, him and I were kind of sending these back and forth all week. Um, few new uphill ski devices are hitting the market or at least kind of hit it or throwing out feelers to the market. Um, the first is from a company called Zoa Engineering, which is essentially a portable rope tow for the backcountry. Um, and what you do is you use paracord and you kind of like wrap paracord around a tree. And then you have this little handheld thing that essentially pulls you back up the paracord. Um, so the idea is, you know, if you're going out in the backcountry and, and building backcountry jumps or, or anything like that, instead of setting a boot pack and making yourself exhausted by, by just hiking a jump over and over again, which I can say from experience is absolutely exhausting. Um, in theory, you can kind of set this up and, and all you have to do is, you know, in, you, you have to bring the little thing down with you, <clears throat> but then it'll pull you right back up instead of hiking or, or skinning or walking back up. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and then there's a Kickstarter campaign for another similar product called Toe Pro. Um, it, to me, it looks less portable, um, not necessarily permanent, but let's call it semi-permanent, I guess. Um, but this, it looks like the cost is gonna be a lot more. In fact, I think it's right around $5,000. Um, so that's, that's pricing some people out for sure. Um, but this to me looks like a great option. Say if you have like a local town organization or a local free ski, freestyle club, you know, if you're looking to set up kind of a, a rail park or just like a slalom practice course or something like that on like your local slope, um, I think something like this, I, I do think there's a market for it. I don't necessarily think it's a individual consumer market. I'm sure there are some people out there that'll be able to justify the $5,000 cost and get one for personal use, but I could see this being really cool for, for organizations. Um, I coach part-time for a company called Green Mountain Academy here in Northern Vermont. You know, I could see us utilizing something like this if we were able to set up an, an airbag or, or a little jib course or something like that. Um, so really cool. I like that kind of stuff. Um, I like technology, especially when it's involved in the ski industry. Um, and then we have our edits of the week. 
So first up, we have another Michaela Schifrin topic. Um, if you haven't seen this already, definitely watch it. It's really cool. Michaela basically does commentary and, and talks you through her Killington slalom run, um, which I found really interesting. I always like to get into the mind of, of upper tier athletes and and kind of see what they're thinking and, and hear them break down the, the experience. Um, next, we have a, a two season edit. So taking his shots from the past two seasons, a gentleman named Cole Richardson, um, young gun seems to be somebody to look out for. I really like the way this guy skis, um, really smooth and fluid. And then he throws in a lot of like slashes and, and kind of surf inspired maneuvers. Um, so definitely re recommend checking that out. Um, this is really, really cool too. Uh, Brady, pa Brady Parent and Freddie Grant, um, along with the Armada crew. And I'm, it, I believe this was filmed at Kimbo Sessions last year, but don't quote me on that because I could be wrong. Um, but they made ski art and they basically took canvases with paint on them and then had people like ski over them or tap them in the air or like make a skidding turn across them. Um, and they actually like came up with some really, really cool pieces. Um, and then the skiers signed them in the corner and stuff. So I was surprised to see this one. I didn't really know that that happened. And I, I, it's really, really interesting to watch. Um, the 2020 Matchstick Productions team, uh, I don't even really know how to describe this video other than the fact that it's absolutely hilarious. Um, they all got together and, and sang a little parody song, um, each sending in little clips for each section. So check it out. It's only a couple minutes long, and it, it's amazing. Um, and then if you remember Taddy the Snow Skating Cat, um, we get some backstory on Taddy the Snow Skating Cat, and it's a pretty heartfelt backstory. I actually didn't realize this, but Taddy's owner um, broke his neck in what is a somewhat famous, like, not car, but kind of dune buggy distance jumping accident. Um, and he kind of talks about that experience and then getting back, learning to walk, and then getting to ride his snow skate with his cat again. And, and kind of in, in some humor at the end, he, he says that his cat's now better than him. That's the big thing that's changed. Um, but it's, it's a nice story, and it, it made me smile. So hopefully, hopefully it makes you guys smile too. Um, and that's it. That's our fourth episode of Top 5 Fridays. Really hope you guys are enjoying these. Um, and as always, let us know if there's anything that you want to see in them. We're always, we're, you know, we're going to try and get creative and, and get some other interesting stuff in these, um, which will be a little easier once I'm back in the studio. Um, but hope everyone is healthy, happy, safe, staying positive, staying active if you can. It's starting to warm up here in Vermont. The sun's out right now. Um, so spring is here and hope you're all doing well. Thank you.